guys, welcome to Southern Law After Hours. Today we're going to talk about conspiracy theories. Not dumb ones like chemtrails or fun ones like Area 51 containing alien technology for the last half century, because that would be cool. Or even obviously true ones like the fact that the government is an ever increasing Leviathan whose only allegiance is to enriching and empowering the few that matter to it while stoking division, greed, and resentment among the general populace. Now, this is going to be about something more mundane than all that, and that is civil conspiracy. That's right. Marilyn Manson and his attorneys are tinfoil hat-wearing conspiracy theorists. Or at least they're conspiracy theorists. Or at least they're alleging conspiracy. And let's talk about why that's important. So, there have been a few questions come up online that say, can, can defendants be independently dropped out of a case or discharged out of a case or dismissed out of a case? And they can, and that brings up some interesting points. Of course, a plaintiff can just drop a defendant out if the plaintiff wants to. Uh, there's no rule against that. Um, and a defendant can seek to be independently dismissed from the case if that, if that defendant can show why the plaintiff's allegations against the defendant or the facts, depending on how far along the case, in, the case is in, or as a matter of law deficient. So that brings up the question in the Wood versus Gore case, could one of the two defendants be discharged out of the case even if the other could not? And I certainly thought about that in terms of this motion to strike that the defendants are making because some of the actions are certainly taken together as alleged uh, in the intentional infliction of emotional distress count that is subject to a motion to strike. But some of the things, the actual acts themselves appear to have been done, at least as far as Manson knows, specifically by Gore. So as alleged, it was Gore who created the fictitious email account and accessed the data and things like that. And it appears, at least from the facts that have come out, as well as what's alleged in the complaint, they believe that, based on information they probably got from Bright and Gore and the electronic devices that she provided them access to, based on the timing. I don't know that for sure, but that's certainly what it looks like, and based on Brighton's declaration. So the question is, if the motion to strike is successful, can Wood get herself out of the case saying, hey, look, love Elmo Gore, etc., but the rest of the stuff you're alleging in the case, well, I didn't do it, and you have no evidence I did it. You didn't even say I did it. So, Judge, um, how about dismiss me out of this case? Peace out. See you guys later. I'm going to go back to Westworld. Thanks. It's been fun. Can she do that? And uh, the answer really is no, because Manson's attorneys have alleged the various four causes of action that they have, but they've also alleged that the causes of action were in furtherance of a conspiracy. They start out right in the first paragraph introduction to the complaint saying that there is a conspiracy. They talk about furtherance of the conspiracy uh, as they move through the facts of the complaint. And even in the causes of action, they repeat the fact that there's a conspiracy saying that Wood gave her tacit or express approval to Gore for the acts that they say Gore took, the email accounts, the impersonating on the internet, uh, that this was part of their common plan and scheme, obviously, to harm Manson. So... What is a civil conspiracy? It's not its own cause of action. It's not its own basis to sue. You can't just allege there was a conspiracy and that's a lawsuit. But what you can do is that if someone harms you in a way that's recognized by the law, defamation potentially, or some of these things that they've Manson has alleged in his complaint, you can say this person did the acts, but they were part of a group of people, two or more, who conspired together to achieve these goals. And if you allege the right things, and say the right things, then that these other people can be defendants in the case, even though they didn't do what was alleged, but because they were part of the conspiracy to make that happen. So that's what it is. It's a form of vicarious liability. So they can say, well, Wood may not have created this email account, or Wood may not have created this document, but she knew Gore was doing it. She approved of Gore doing it, and it was for their common scheme and purpose to damage Manson. And if they can prove all that, then they could achieve vicarious liability for this conspiracy. So let's take a closer look. So California has a pattern jury instruction for civil conspiracy with the essential factual elements outlined that the jury is to be instructed on and that they would have to find. Let's take a look at it. So the plaintiff claims that whatever pronoun is sufficient here, who knows, was harmed by the co-conspirator. Let's say here, um, Gore and then insert tort theory, she created this fake account or whatever, and that Wood is responsible for the harm because she was part of a conspiracy to commit this tort. 
A conspiracy is an agreement by two or more persons to commit a wrongful act. Such an agreement may be made orally or in writing or may be implied by the conduct of the parties. If you find that Wood committed whatever or Gore whoever committed a tort that harmed Manson, then you must determine whether the other defendant is also responsible for the harm. Wood, say in this case, would be responsible if Manson proves the following, that Wood was aware that Gore planned to commit these torts, that Wood agreed with it and intended it to be committed, and that mere knowledge of the wrongful act without cooperation or agreement to cooperate is insufficient to be responsible for the harm. So let's say Gore actually did this stuff, and let's say Gore told some other friend, hey, I'm going to hack into Manson's accounts and make him look bad. And that person said, okay, whatever, bro, I don't care. That person is not part of a conspiracy, right? They don't have a common interest in damaging Manson. It's not a plan they're doing together. They just happen to know about it. Now, of course, in this case, Manson says Wood not only knew about it, but she approved of it, and it was in furtherance. In fact, these actions were only done because of the common plan and scheme that they had to damage Manson. How do you prove it? I mean, you're not going to probably have a videotape of them saying together, although you kind of almost do in this case, that we want to damage Manson. You, they kind of do say that, whether it's right or wrong is a separate issue, but they clearly work together to achieve a, a result that is detrimental to Manson, whether he deserves it or not being a different story. <clears throat> but it's not a secret that they work together to try and do things um, to reach a result involving Manson. So a conspiracy may be inferred from the circumstances, including the nature of the acts done, the relationship of the parties, the interest of the co-conspirators. You don't have to uh, prove that the person personally committed the wrong act, or even knew all the details about it, or even all the identities of the other participants. So this is a fairly loose thing to prove to show this conspiracy, but you do have to prove it. You can't merely suspect it. However, in this case, there's more than mere suspicion, of course. There is the fact that these guys actually did work together. It really comes down to whether the acts were wrongful or not. So to me, if Gore did do these things, they've got a pretty good case to keep Wood in the case along for the ride far enough along to find out uh, whether this actually happened and their effort to prove this was a conspiracy to damage Manson. Because if they did do these wrongful acts, it, it certainly looks likely that it was because they were working together to try and, and achieve this result against Manson. And in their, in their minds, the result is warranted, right? That he gets punished for the behavior that he's engaged in, which is abusing women. If you're on the Manson side, it's unwarranted. That it's an attack on Manson and really either for revenge or just simply to put themselves further up in the Me Too movement, whatever you think their motivations are, it's still the same thing. They're trying to they're trying to get Manson to be held accountable by law or some other format, uh, public opinion or whatever, for the allegations they've made against him. So in Manson's lawsuit, you have four causes of action, four legal theories for relief, that could be narrowed down depending on how the anti-slap motions go, but they won't all go away on that motion. So four causes of action, and then also a theory of joint liability for vicarious liability that has to be shown. That's not an independent cause of action. It's just a way to hook both defendants to be liable for the actions of each other for these four causes of action. Remember in the Depp case, Depp was found liable for a couple million bucks based on the statements of his lawyer. Now in that case, it was an agency situation, but still that's vicarious liability. Depp didn't do it, but the jury found that the relationship between the two people were enough that Depp would be found vicariously liable for that. And so conspiracy is another form of that. It doesn't require agency. It just requires the conspiracy. So it's a liability expander to these co-defendants, not a separate cause of action. So I'll switch gears onto another topic, which is another thing that I've seen commented on and so just wanted to bring it up, which is, um, when are the law enforcement going to do something? And if you're on the abuser side, what the hell's taking so long with this investigation? It's not closed. Nobody has said it's closed. Only a leak to TMZ said that it's being referred to the DA and probably it would be um, closed or slash not pursued due to whatever issues with the case. But nothing's formally, to my knowledge, been said one way or the other. So why haven't they arrested Manson? I thought that was going to happen. Uh, now, if you're on Manson's side, the answer is obvious. Uh, duh, because he's not guilty. So maybe, maybe not, right? But then on the other hand, the Manson people have said, hey, uh, there's clear evidence of perjury by Wood here and clear evidence of impersonating a law enforcement officer. Why haven't they arrested Wood? 
You could also say the same thing if you're a Manson person. If you're a Manson person, then you believe they have clear evidence from what Brighton has given them that Gore impersonated uh, Manson over the internet and hacked into his materials, and those can be crimes. So how, how come she hasn't been arrested? How come all these people haven't been rounded up and arrested? I mean, we all know that they're guilty of these crimes one way or the other, right? Depending on which side you believe. Well, here's a place where everyone can come together in unity and be frustrated with law enforcement. And this reflects back to what the plaintiff's attorney said, the, the lawyer who's representing Bianco and Smithline, that the actions they took, the civil actions, were to gain some agency to take control over the pace of dealing with the accusations they had because they can't control law enforcement, and that's true. So he says, hey, look, if by putting these cases in civil court, we can force this to be reckoned with. We can't control law enforcement, but we can control what we do, and what we can do is, is take these to court and have Manson answer for them. In a similar vein, uh, you know, Gore and Wood, they haven't been arrested, no indication of that. I don't, I don't believe the rumors of anybody being investigated for anything at this point, except for maybe the FBI looked at that letter a little bit, but it would take a lot more for me to believe anybody's concerned about that. Regardless of where they are, they aren't, they haven't done anything about it. So what did Manson do? Manson filed his own lawsuit against Wood and Gore, right? He did the same thing. He took agency over the situation and said, hey, these wrongs have been done to me. And he said in his lawsuit that these are crimes. And he's filed a civil action to pursue against those. And it's not unusual to have um, cases go on a parallel civil and criminal path. A lot of that depends on statute limitations, the posture of the defendants. Sometimes you want the case to go forward civilly because you have some issues with criminal evidence. Sometimes you want the criminal case to go forward so you can get a result that helps you in the civil case. So who knows? It all depends. And sometimes the attorneys on either side can be talking to law enforcement about what they're doing and, and how these cases interplay. Hard to say. But it's also convenient to be able to say, I, I simply want justice and law enforcement is taking too long because that's an answer to the question of, you just sue them for money. That's all you want. It's money, right? No, I want justice and the police take too long, so I want to force it here now. And it's a fair answer back to that, right? So both sides are in court pursuing things that hypothetically could, in certain contexts, be criminal conduct, yet they're all being pursued civilly right now, right? In these extremely lengthy cases that just delay, 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 this hearing gets delayed, that causes this other hearing to get delayed, and it just goes on for years. It really does suck how long cases take. That's terrible if you think about memory, um, documents, witnesses moving around or dying or forgetting things or remembering things that, that never really happened in the first place. Not talking particularly to this case, uh, the expense of this for whoever's having to pay for it, it all just adds up over time, but that's the nature of the system. It's just how the resources are. It just takes a long time to move these things through, and some of it is by the due process. It takes time to move through the legal arguments before you can get to a proper posture for having a trial, and also in the middle of that, you would do discovery. So it's going to be a long ride unless these cases all of a sudden all fold in the settlement posture which may not happen, it might happen, who knows, if it doesn't happen, then these will one by one eventually get to the finish line at some point when we're all older than we are now. So that's two topics covered for the weekend, and I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. Thanks.